Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to Paint to Life, episode 48. Tonight, we're learning and painting that which lies beneath the cold and icy places of the world. Two furriers, a father and son, are traveling through a cold mountain pass when, unbeknownst to them, a Ramores has staked out the territory for itself. I'm GMA Tank. Let's get painting. All right, last week we painted a rainbow boa and learned the legend of Kozitiotl. If you missed it, you can find it right here or in the description below. Now this week, after just 11 months, Paint to Life has passed its 1,000 subscriber milestone. So I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who's been here since the beginning, all the new viewers who have come along. Thank you for supporting me by liking, commenting, and sharing the channel with other people you think would enjoy it. I really do appreciate it. A Ramores, also known as a polar worm, is a huge monstrosity that lives in the arctic climates and frozen tundra of the world. Resembling a giant centipede with leathery, tough, wing-like fans that flare and wide mouth brimming with jagged teeth, their unmistakable ability is that to raise their core body temperature which radiates intense heat, dealing harm to their enemies and melting all snow and ice that they burrow through. They prey on elk, bears, pretty much anything that shares their territory. They hide deep beneath the snow and ice. They lie in wait, waiting for the sensation of tremors from any movement above them. Conversely, when hidden like this, the Ramores lowers its body temperature so that it doesn't melt its surrounding cover. The frost giants scour the icy waste looking for eggs of these creatures. You see, they can be trained from a young age to obey commands and guard the icy giants' strongholds. Unlike the fully grown specimens, the young remorses gnaw on their victims instead of swallowing them whole. Creatures swallowed by mother, on the other hand, have a corrosive acid bath to look forward to, with not much hope of escape from inside the creature. Dungeon Masters remember, this is an evolved creature with a fully functional survival instinct. When it's seriously wounded, it's going to run, throwing a wrench in any ongoing rescue attempts for any PC it may have swallowed. And since it has the ability to burrow, it probably will. But who is our Ramores? A furrier in his early 40s, and his son, who had just 10 winters under his belt, were making the journey between two prosperous trading cities in the Snowflake Mountains. This was the first time the two would make the trip together in the winter, but the man had made it many times as the road was relatively well marked and safe. Night was descending, and it was time to make camp. Father set the wheel chalk on their wheelbarrow full of furs and instructed his son to go up the steep rocks off the road and prepare a fire. The boy reluctantly did so with little enthusiasm. Boy, what was the hesitation to do as I asked? I'm afraid of hidden caves in the rocks. What if there's a hibernating grizzly? <sighs> Grizzlies, eh? You're still not afraid of that tale I told you of the Redwald family wiped out by the roper in a cave? No, da! The father strokes his beard intently. You need to be more worried about what eats the bears. Polar worms. They burst right through the icy ground, grabs them, pulls them under. You remember your uncle Brian? Ye? Says the young boy, a betrayal of hesitation in his voice. I never told your mother exactly how he done died. I didn't find him dead in his bed. I found him outside his cottage, high atop a tree. He had died of not having water to drink. But he lived beside the river. That's my point. A polar worm must have chased him up and waited him out. Brian was too afraid to risk walking on the ground, being swallowed up and dissolved inside the beast's gullet. The young boy stares blankly into the fire. A gentle shiver breaks him from his stare. Or that family of reindeer farmers, the good ones? You remember that stout, black-haired boy you used to play with when you were seven? Zachary? Yeah, he didn't move away. His entire family disappeared without a trace, but so did all eleven of their reindeer. Father pokes at the fire with a large stick and puts some more logs into the blaze. Town law blamed bandits, thieves, but I'm pretty sure I know what happened. The polar worm strikes once. They lie under snow, lowering their body tempers to almost that of the frozen around them and sit and wait. When they sense the vibrations, they heat up like the sun and melt their way through the ground to catch you. Not from the side from underneath. Voracious eaters. They can consume half their weight a day in food, and consume they will. At over 40 feet long, some of them must weigh a good 5,000 pounds. Imagine how much they need to eat. So, that's why you should always prepare your camp atop a rock, because you can never be sure what lies beneath. The young boy stands up defiantly. That's it! 
I'm not afraid, Dad. You're just trying to scare me like that other story you told me of the boy's grandfather who done locked him in the basement with all the baby spiders. I'm not falling for that again. Oh, really? You're a brave boy now, are you? Yes, I most certainly am. All right, then prove it. Our wagon is what, 90 hand from here? I dare you to go down and put your hand on the handle right now. Fine. The boy grabbed a burning stick from the fire and carefully slid down the snowy rock, stopping just shy of where the boulder met the fresh snow. The ground seemed ominous all of a sudden, like it might open up and swallow him the moment he put his foot down. He looked both ways down the dark road, expecting to see evil looking back at him, but there was not. The wheelbarrow was only about 60 hands away, out of the deep snow, atop the well-traveled road, but the distance appeared infinitude. As he made his way, all of his senses were heightened. His eyes actively fought the glare. He heard the licking flame of his torch in his ear, and he could smell the burning pine tar on the branch. Now over halfway there, he heard an unidentified animal howl in the distance, amplified by the mountain. Startled, he dropped this torch and broke into a sprint. There he leapt up and over the side of the wheelbarrow, landing on top of the soft furs and a slight fresh covering of new snow. There he lay for 15 seconds, blood pressure retreating, not moving so much as a hair. Secretly, fearing an imminent death from below, terror contrasted with the beautiful green aurora in the sky high above. Finally, his nerves calmed. He popped his head up back in the direction which he'd traveled the giant smile onto his face. But there, atop the rocks, was a roaring fire, but no sign of his father. Dad? Dad? I'm not messing around, Dad. Suddenly, the entire wheelbarrow and all its contents flew into the air as if it was pushed from beneath. The boy screamed in terror Dad! as he landed on all fours on the ground, looking around, expected to be swallowed whole. <laughs> You should have seen your face, lad. His father had the wheelbarrow handles in hand, standing upright, having just upended his son and was clearly enjoying himself. You orc wit! Oi! Watch your tongue to your dad or I'll tan your hide, lad. Sorry, da. Now listen, child. I was playing mass mischief with you to be sure, but know that such a creature does exist. Just not here, lad. At least, not anymore. So it is a smart man who builds camp atop rock, to be sure. In the distance, an unearthly sound echoes through the mountain pass. The father and the son look at one another. By the hells. Uh, perhaps we should return to our rock. You'll not hear me argue, boy. Gulcott, the Forever King, stood. Skull exposed, hole in his torso covered in botfly larva. Exposed organs, flies buzzing about, striking the stone with his great club, making quite a noise. A huge blue centipede, radiating intense heat, bursts from the ice and snow, crawling towards that which disturbed its slumber. Golcott drops his club and says, Come, get your fill, filthy vermin. The Ramorez entangles him with his many legs and begins to shove the Forever King down into its gullet, where he is digested and destroyed. Ramorez. The Polar Worm. Alright, what did you think of my story of the Ramorez, the polar worm? Here he is for the shelf. 
Just a quick reminder, if you're interested in the painting video up here, you can catch it on Tuesdays. And of course, Paint to Life episodes drop on Saturdays. Thousand subscribers, really appreciate your support. Head on down to your friendly local gaming store and support them too. Pick up some paintbrushes, some minis, some paints. Give them a try. Send me your pictures of your finished work. Maybe I'll showcase it on Paint to Life. Or let me know what you think you want me to paint next. I've got a good episode already planned for next week though. And of course, the one after that, to celebrate my thousand subscribers, it's the biggest mini I've ever painted, so that's coming soon. For now, though, we're done. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. See you next time. Uh, perhaps we should... Re Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Not acceptable. <laughs> I'm so sorry.